I was at Georgia, I think in 2003 or four, and I, man, I had a really good arm. Man, it was, uh, you, you know, a low 90s arm 10 years ago was even more rare than it is now. But he just kind of drifted and run to the plate. And I said, Randy, you're a big leaguer. Won't you coach me up a little bit? What can I do? So the tool he used or taught me was front foot over back foot. And he wanted me to try to tell the guy to kind of stay over the rubber a longer period of time and don't allow yourself to move to the plate till you get to the apex or the summit of your, your leg lift. So I really started using that with that guy. What I see, and I don't want to turn into a gimmick, what I see is prescription. So if you have a stomach ache, Pepto-Bismol may be appropriate. You know, if you have a headache, you know, get Tylenol. I think sometimes we try all 50 drills and we try it with all of our guys. I think it's good to find the identity of our guy, what ails him, before we just start shoving the medicine down their throat. So we try to take a little bit of time and get to know our guys and identify before we take off. But any of those guys that are just running off and leaving their arm, the drifting, the lunging, all those different terms, front foot over back foot is a good term. Fast forward here about 12 years with Matt Hobbs, then we talked about this is drill one, bringing it up and hooking it in front of the knee, and that allows you to set your hips a little bit before movement toward the plate, setting the hips, and then also going behind. Let's see if this will play. Good. Matt's a much better athlete than I, so. He can show it. And then the third one is behind the knee. But again, it kind of forces you to engage your hips before you make that initial movement to the plate. And that's one of the values that we found with that for the guys that run, drift, and just doesn't gather as well.